Today's episode of the Vagram special features Hans Schoeny of Wimmel Schoeny Weingut. One of the pioneers of both biodynamics and single variety Rotterbell Liners in the region, Hans shares his origin story and winemaking philosophy. Before taking us through six of their wines, a really interesting selection of what he's producing, and he talks about the overseas markets for these wines. Enjoy. So let's let's talk uh, some uh, something about the history of working here at Vimacciani Winery. Uh, so actually, the family Vimacciani, I'm I'm the head because uh, my father is not here anymore, but my mother helps me in the vineyard. I started 32 vintages ago, and uh, a little less than the half of my time I was not organic. So I know also the other side, uh, so the receipt we got from school. But we also uh, walked around in other countries at this time, and Austria at this time in the 80s was a little bit more closed, uh, was not so open to other countries like Italy, which was a neighborhood of France. So I was very interested to, to visit, and also some New World wines in South Africa. Of course, we tried everything at the beginning, but uh, more and more um, we, we liked the, the small structures like I was used to at home. So my, my house was always uh, producing wine. So I got some vineyards from my grandfather and from my father. I still make like Westburgunder. But of course, um, we, we learned also big structures and big wineries. But uh, the way of organic farming was for me an ideal uh, way for the future of the winery with my journey because we don't want to grow too much. Because it's some, sometimes you see a growth of like cancer. So this is not, not very sustainable. And uh, so we started 2000 uh, to grow organic, also with some friends like you visited, Tony Söldner, for example, was of the same way, or uh, Fritz Salomon. There was one night we, we sat together, uh, these three guys, and we started with biodynamic after we had some years of organic. And we started with the horns. And we invited a guy who made um, an evening to to tell and to make a, you know, also with dialogues. And we laughed when we heard something with the horns. And we said, <laughs> okay, let's try. And it was a step in a new world. And we we cannot think we are, net, we are on the end. So we found so many ideas how to make the structure, how to form our farms, so to renew the uh, working with animals. Because if you have animals on a farm, not only wine, you can, you can use all the surroundings, which is more pretty, but it makes also sense. And, uh, and you get also some compost, which is important. And it's a... Uh, one of the cores, uh, Rudolf Steiner told us to use the compost from your own materials. And so for me, you are not biodynamic if you have no animals. It's like organic plus. But uh, biodynamic is really to have their own cows. But of course, uh, if you start, it's not possible today. But uh, you know, this was the way. And Rota Vitlina was also something... After the Grüne Wittliner, so the Grüne Wittliner was our most work when I started to uh, renew and bring bring up, and also the other varieties we already had in our farm. But Rota Wittliner was too less. So uh, we started in a small group and to search the good clones and uh, to select the own lines of the farms and bring it a little bit more to the people. The single vineyards were very special, and I fell in love when I started with Fumberg and Welfel which were very impressive parts we visited together. And uh, it's a special piece of land. You cannot make fields there. So it's only for wine possible. But it was not uh, as famous and not clear for everybody 30 years ago. But at the moment in Austria, there is a big uh, discussion, uh, reform about the DRC and uh, uh, the first, also the so, erste Lage. Also, ja, das ist von, von meiner Community ist Fumberg und Welfel. Also, das ist one of the best places there. And uh, we have uh, Westburgunder in Scheiben. We, we thought to have some, 
also the, the right grape at the right soil. And I can show you later with the wines. But uh, the Lös is also something very unique. But with biodynamic farming, the Lös turns out its minerals and brings it in the wine. And before, our wines tasted a little bit different. And of course, we, we must speak about our own yeast, which is a concept. Also, we develop every year our own yeast new. And uh, so we have every year also the single vineyard, also the, the, the vintage inside of the wine, somehow. Also, you can feel also a little bit the vintage. Also, if you close your eyes and you taste, don't look at the label. Every yeast is a little bit different, and it is like it should be. Also, no adding sugar, no acidity, like the, the vintage is, because the sun and the weather forms every year the style of the wine, not to make a balance with some ingredients as a really pure grape. This is also, we also want to try, and... Uh, Yeah, also of course, uh, uh, nature wines. Also, the last 10 years, we took part on, on some groups with macerating more mm -hmm. tannins and uh, less filtering. Sully we make since 1987. This wine we have here on the table, mm -hmm. and uh, we make also a pet nut, which is also something we made new. Also, the world of the natural, natural wines is something which makes us young again. <laughs> And I will visit Angers in France because it's a Demeter fair. And this is only... <laughs> Not so loud, bitte. <laughs> uh, to exchange with my friends from France and Italy, of course, Germany, at the Probein, it's very interesting for me. We take part, very proud, on the... German Demeter place at Proven because we exchange, exchange very much with our Demeter colleagues and this makes us really happy because we're a worldwide community. Also, mostly uh, our themes are different from country to country but uh, some is often the same as the work of Demeter. I'm also part of the Austrian uh, Demeter rules group also more for the theme of wine or fermenting things And we're sitting together, f five, six people, and talking about old rules and new rules. And the Austrians are very conservative <laughs> with the rules. <laughs> and uh, we have a lot of young Demeter wineries always visiting our uh, preparat group here at Wagram. We make, and we want to take them with us and looking in the vineyards and counting the, the, the worms and looking at the leaves and we sitting together some vineyards every year and if there's a young one we taste his wines and sitting together just to talk and to have a good exchange to help each other together and to make an open uh, dialogue about winemaking and how to design your own farm at home uh, yeah i think it's it's great to hear uh, yeah really your your origin story you know how you came to be doing what you're doing and then Uh, I, I love the way you could have kind of seamlessly uh, adapted and, and went into talking about the younger winemakers around you as well, because it's, uh, I think it's always, it's always interesting when, when people have been, in a sense, kind of you know, pioneers and leading the way. And you know, as you sort of just said to me off the, off the mic, you know, in, in the 2000s, uh, organic was almost something that people didn't want to see on the label. And they, they maybe, uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily a selling point or, or something as, a, as an attraction. But, but obviously that's changed you know massively over the last sort of 20 years and um yeah i think it, i think it's it's great that you you know stay i guess thinking ahead and thinking ahead in the in the next generation and, and bringing in those winemakers you know the younger ones and you know able to to kind of share that experience and and, and bring them through and uh yeah it's a i think it's a really positive thing you know for, for you as well and, and and just for you know for the wider region so fantastic how we grow the, the grapes For us, it's important that they are grown organic and uh, we work biodynamic, so the soil must be the first where we start. So to give him compost, to give him green mass, 
and the whole year something growing and green, not the naked soil. Of course, we need therefore a lot of helpers, so insects like we have seen before and some uh, bigger animals. This year, very important are some birds who eat the mice, which are too much, mm-hmm. but we have uh, some, so I don't know the word, steinkauts, some kind of oil, which is breeding here at Wagram, and they eat every day, maybe more than one mice. So it's a good helper. <laughs> Now, also, all this networking is important. And the grapes, of course, uh, yes, we treat by hand very much. We start in May and end if in July. Afterwards, I, we, have, we send our workers back to holiday again, and they come for hand-picking end of September or so. That's normal. Hand-picking is important. We work with the own yeast, which is also very important. We formed also 2006 Demeter wine rules. So it was the first group who have written it down as only their own yeast and hand picking and you know, very less treatment. So we have not limited sulfur, but of course the organic EU uh, rules for organic wine are very restricted, uh, good, but we don't need only 50, 50% normally of this which is allowed, also somehow. For natural wines, of course, we're less. We have also a sulfurless wine, also something like the pet nut. Also, we have a, a natural, natural wine line uh, we name Pur, which is a little bit unusual. But mostly of my life, I worked with single vineyards and uh, grape variety wines. We still make, like Fumberg or Welfel. This is shortly. Yes, and Rote Vitlina is our specialty. The first wine we try is our entrance Grünewitliner. It's a, a based settled Grünewitliner, which is not very heavy in alcohol. He's crispy with CO2, like the traditional conservative Austrians love. So s- similar like a heurigen Grünewitliner, but made silly, where you, 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 you conservate the, the use somehow in the bottle with this method. Directly from the yeast, after five months, uh, since... 32 vintages we bottle in March. At the beginning we worked with wood, but um, it's always 7,000 bottles. It's from stainless steel since 20 years. It's the classic, but I must say uh, he made all these fermentations, also malactic in in the in the cask, and um, it's a very low sulfur wine. So it's very easy to drink and very dangerous because it's flowing. <laughs> <laughs> a traditional Grünewald yeah. easy. <laughs> a lot of the other winemakers that I've visited, they, they have a wine like this in their range, as you yeah. say. They're kind of the, I guess, the, the, the classic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone needs it in their life. But I, I was just saying to you, I think the, the thing that is quite surprising here, though, as well, is, yeah, that there are you know, still some of those sort of yeah, fruity, um, more kind of, I guess, easy drinking elements. But what's really surprising me here is the the kind of the herbaceousness that's, that's coming out. You know, I think even on the nose and and certainly on the finish, I think we're we're maybe getting a a clue here about what the vineyards are looking like. You know, just that, that they do have that added biodiversity, that they do have that that life. And you know, you were telling me earlier about some of that. Uh, is is by design is is what you will kind of go out and and, and sow out in between the rows but then a lot of it is wild and a lot of it is kind of what appears you know year to year and and it will uh, I guess yeah give you give you clues about what is happening in the soil about what kind of turns up no as of biodiversity this is a very important job of us uh, to to raise uh, this natural diversity and not cutting too much, and then to get the salvage, the yarrow, uh, so the most dry-loving uh, natural herbs. And uh, normally, if you cut too, too often, you get only grass. But these herbs, like salvage, or we have some others, uh, they have at- etheric aromas, and you feel it in also in the wine because it goes, goes inside of the grapes. Now let's try the second Grüner Wettliner. This is the single vineyard Fumberg, which is a very rich, loose soil, 
and this vineyard is in the middle of the hill. Uh, we drove down from a little chapel down uh, from Welfel and below three, 300. Uh, and it ends at the base, at the road between Fels and Wagram and Gösing. And it looks south, as a beautiful steps of terraces, south facing. And we get, since long times, every year yield, which is uh, in the deeper uh, places, uh, not always, because some winter it's cold. But at Fungberg, uh, you have the security to get no problems with this, because cool air flows down. But you are also somewhere hide it and protect it from the north wind. So it's a, a, a very fast ripening single vineyard uh, climate. Yeah. And you, therefore this wine gives a very rich nose of Grunewaldina. Also not only apples, a little bit smoky. And uh, somehow Fumberg has more water than on the top of the hill, which is also helpful for Grunewaldina. It's a perfect place for Grunewaldina. This vineyard was planted in the 70s. Fungberg is our biggest uh, Grünwettliner production in my winery. Uh, it's a, you can say it's the, the, the normal, the, the typical Wagram Grünwettliner. Yeah, I think classic is definitely the, the word I would use there. I mean, I think, again, we're back into the, the full-on Lus now. And uh, yeah, that's then, yeah, with that better water, water storage capacity... I think it's bringing up a lot more the the fruit and getting a lot more sort of honeyed notes here. Um, yeah, but still, so you know, somewhat rich and uh, yeah, as you say, classic, classic of the region. And here is the step three of Carino Metlina, the Welfel single vineyard, which is a vintage uh, seventeen Welfel Alte Reben. Also, we work with old wines there. Of course, uh, Wimmer Journey has now more. Uh, vineyards uh, at Welfel than in the 90s when we fell in love with the single vineyard because my father bought in the 70s a vineyard there and we saw in the cellar the wine is so closed in spring uh, if you compare to the loose soils also this soil there is an ancient sea coast and normally everything is covered from this age uh, which is 50 million years ago when we had a like Caribic uh, sea coast here in Fels and Wagram, but uh, Lös actually is uh, f- dropped down on all the soils by ice age, and therefore it's covered. But at Welfel, it's open, and you see some uh, seashells, some uh, teeth of sharks. So it is a, a sand stone, really a stone, which is very dry, and the roots have to fight. But the old wines, uh, they don't care. They are growing slower. And also the development of the wine is a little bit more minerality. And you have to wait one year. And therefore we serve Vintage 17. And he is now rich in the nose. Starts fine, but opens very like with sweet honey. And on the tongue, you see much more smooth and rounded body. Yeah. And the Welfel is a good ripening potential. Therefore, we close with a cork. I totally get what you're saying there about the, the differences between those two single vineyards. And, you know, it's great to hear you know, just about why, really. You know, I think, I think uh, you know, the, the joy of drinking wine is, you know, for, for a lot of people is just in the drinking. But I think it's also interesting for, for a lot of other people that, you know, that want to know, why the wine is so different, why it's tasting different. And, um, yeah, the, the, you know, of course, everything you've just said there in terms of what's going on in the soil. But then on, on the nose and in the mouth, the, the, the fruit almost then takes a little step back, I would say. Uh, obviously, some influence of the, of the age as well, the, the 17 versus an 18. But then that, that doesn't leave anything. It's, it's then filled out, I think, by, you know, a, a much more sort of mineralic and, and perhaps savory uh, note and and you know all sort of uh, playing in harmony there and uh, yeah this is this then follows through for me you know on the palate on the finish it's it's then yeah still very elegant 
Um, but yeah, just just to maybe even a, you know a wine to sort of play around with with, with food pairings, and because it, it, as I say, the the savouriness does then come very much more to the fore with the fruit in the background. Now we jump uh, from the Welfel Grüner Wettliner to the Welfel Riesling, vintage seventeen. We taste now, and uh, he has to show much more about the soil also in the nose than. The vintage 18 we bottled two days ago, which is a, a perfect fruity young Riesling. But you could not uh, smell this uh, idea of Flintstone, also this minerality in the nose like 17. Because after this bottle aging, the vintage 17 shows, it, shows a lot of Riesling. The fruit, a little bit of apricots or peaches, and a very long uh, ending acidity, which is unusual for this hot summer of 17. But maybe the, in August, some raindrops helped us to make this great acidity of vintage 17 Riesling Welfel. Now let's taste uh, the grape of Rotavetlina. We have uh, here Rotavetlina Felsen Wagram, which means it comes from four different single vineyards which is blended to this wine, Rotavetlina Fels am Wagram. Also, we have three different Rotavetlina in our assortment, and this is the classical one. We believe it was 100 or 200 years ago, uh, the wine was delivered from Fels am Wagram to Vienna. Like in old descriptions, in old newspapers, uh, descri script, described as a good table and this, this, this dish, dish wine, <laughs> yeah, don't know the word. So here in Austria we have an idea for a good wine, which is not too heavy, not too, uh, but also not not unripe, not light. So somehow the heart, the middle, and the wine lovers in Vienna in past also uh, when they loved the wine, they didn't change. So they had a big consume, mm -hmm. and the wine must be good. Otherwise, they changed to another. Local, other restaurant. <laughs> yeah, and therefore, today it's a, a, a smooth, a bloomy wine, which is not too heavy. Good grapes, but not spätlese or somehow. Uh, also, of course, uh, natural grapes with, without any additives. And we harvest late. We wait for the red color. Before I showed you in the vineyard, it starts, but it's not ready the timing. You don't see the color. And so no aroma, not enough. As it should be full developed, and then we harvest. Uh, but we don't care if the wine has only 12 alcohol or 11.5. It depends on the vintage. Some years we have 12.5, 12, some years 12. And this is 18. I think he has 11.9 uh, uh, of analyzes, but you can't feel any uh, that you say it's it's less alcohol. It is a full, full-bodied wine. It's more smooth than Grüner Wettliner, not so crispy acidity. It's very bloomy. You can say. And Rote Wettliner is a long tradition of a grape. You see here this gold medal from my grandfather, 1950, Rote Wettliner from one vineyard. We have also from a newspaper, 1895. And with some friends, uh, 20 years ago, we started uh, to a comeback of this grape in my region and today it's our unique grape at Wagram. Um, we have not a monopole for Rotwetlina in Austria because it was 100, 200 years ago all everywhere but at the moment and in future more Wagram has the biggest competence for Rotwetlina. So it's our specialty. <laughs> Great to hear I guess yeah some of the, the history really because uh, you know I think anybody that's listened to this series or anybody that's looked at the the marketing and the and what's being published about the Wagram region, they're in no doubt that there is a that, you know that, that everybody's kind of in, on the same page in terms of talking about Rotteveltlina as the unique grape and that it, it is uh, the most well suited and this is the best place to kind of grow it. But I think it's also interesting to look back and see. Okay, it has been here for a long time, but but you know, the, in your lifetime, it's maybe went out of fashion, or this was something that people here were thinking about different grapes, and you know, I think uh, fashions kind of come and go, and and um, I just think it's uh, yeah, very 
must be very rewarding that you're able to kind of almost then go back and rediscover you know this which was originally here you know it's kind of um just going back to the the origins and making as you say fantastic uh, wines like this and uh, i'm actually then thinking back to back to london really you know your description there of this is something that you know it's it's just it's designed to be to be drunk you know and it's and it's not going to be too heavy and it's going to go with many different types of food and uh, i think it it fits with me what i hear a lot about the way that people just like to go out and, and eat you know they don't necessarily want to be so fussy i guess about choosing to pair each course and changing the wine and calling the sommelier over and you know all having all of that sort of going on while they're just sitting down with their friends and their family they maybe just want something just like this which can kind of carry them you know through multiple courses of a, of a dinner Thank you so much. I think it was, uh, yeah, super interesting again, you know, learning something from every single winemaker that I'm speaking with. Mm. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, I, try, I tried to, I tried to uh, finish off, but yeah, we're going to now <laughs> put another bottle. <laughs> the last one is something we will produce next week. So we harvest uh, Zwegel grapes, uh, Saint Laurent grapes, Pinot Noir grapes, which are very ripe. And then we ferment and take a little bit of the color and the, of the fruit with it. And after fermentation, at the end, when it has a little hint of sugar in it, so still, then we bottle and catch him in the bottle with these bubbles. Sulfurless, untouched. It is like it is. I get, yeah, I, I'm, I'm super glad that you did, you did pull this one out because it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's, a, again, you know, classic, classic pet nat, nice and light, nice and drinkable. But there's, there's real depth there as well. I'm really, really getting a lot of, of course, the, the, the fruit, but there's, there's then something else. There's, a, there's sort of a honey, sort of a, a, a breadth here. And uh, yeah, if you're talking about the, the first wine being dangerous, I can see on a, on a hot day, this, this being a super refreshing, super drinkable top. Yeah, I'll keep the, the last question pretty short, I think. And uh, yeah, really just ask you to, I guess, talk a little bit to you know where around the world these wines are being enjoyed a little bit maybe to your customers as well you you've, you've spoken a lot about you know bringing the customers with you and and keeping them those loyal customers um happy i guess and and maybe looking ahead to yeah i think you've got some some plans to to visit us over in the uk later in the year so we'll, we'll sort of bring all those together now in the last question um uh, i think uh now the question is to talk about where the wines are going to yeah, so normally 50% is drunk in Austria, which are some restaurants, some direct customers, but we have also some uh, skiing hotels or for the holidays uh, in the west or in the south. But our German neighbors, uh, mostly in the south of Germany, but also a little bit in Berlin, we have a lot of Austrians who are sitting in Germany, or you can see... Uh, um, skiing and uh, cooking is something of the two Austrian things we export a little bit <laughs> yeah. and um, if you're a wine producer you are happy to have some Austrians in a restaurant so, and networking we have a little bit uh, export to USA since 2003 as a very nice people and they love also the pet nut uh, since three or four years they were the first when we developed and we are still in good contact. Uh, we had started uh, with Norway and uh, with Sweden in the last years. Belgium is also an old traditional customer from us, a little bit Holland this year. And uh, we are so happy to have uh, Northern neighbors as a uh, market, as a Prague. We have an importer which is also a winemaker. And he has uh, two restaurants in Prague, a wine bar, the Wildlim bar, and uh, we are so lucky to have a good contact to our neighbors in Czech. We plan the second time to make a wine dinner in London in November at the Hungry Piglets with my friend Pete Goss in the restaurant Hungry Piglets. And maybe a second evening uh, for the first time in Wales in the uh, farm Combs Head where we have also the wines. They have also a shop for the 
agriculture products like mangalitsa pigs, but of course they have also gastronomy and also wines there in the shop. And uh, yeah, so we have uh, built up a good connection with the wines, with Mayfly wines. But the original connection was uh, cooking and slotting mangalitsa pigs in Austria, a course at my friend's farm. And this networking over, uh, so not only wine, but uh, wine and food pairs very good together. This is somehow the, the theme which brought us together in England. Thank you so much, Hans. I really enjoyed being at the winery and tasting with you. And as you can tell, there was very little resistance to me to that extra wine we tasted. You can, of course, find below website, main social media handles and email address for Hans. And while you're at it, why not head over to interpretingwine.com slash listen for details of how to listen to the podcast. And of 